My name is Richard Lambert. I coordinate the Liverpool Cities Programme at Cities Forum, the global sustainable urban development NGO. I'm talking to you about the impacts of COVID-19 on cities globally today. And Cities Forum, in partnership with GIZ India, SEPTA University and Ideal Management Consultants, recently completed some research into the likely impact of uh, COVID-19 on cities and mobility uh, through speaking with over 550 global experts who will be able to draw on some of the research findings uh, when talking to you today. Um, and it being six months into the virus, the spread of the virus throughout the world, there won't be a city in the world that hasn't been impacted in some way or another by the virus. Um, and that was one of the findings from our research that showed that experts think that the virus and the pandemic will have a lasting impact on the way cities develop and the way they're planned for the future. Um, but we think this can be done in a sustainable and positive way. So looking into the short term, so some of the immediate impacts of the virus on cities, um, as most cities where they experienced the spread of the virus, there had to be a period of lockdown where all but essential services generally were reduced. Um, and we generally saw people either working from home or not working at all. We also saw a massive reduction in mobility and movement throughout cities. And so we saw reductions in the numbers of people using public transport, but also using private transport reduce. Um, we also saw some unexpected positive impacts as a result of the virus on cities. So we saw improvements in air quality as mobility and services were reduced um, across the world. We also saw uh, increases in the levels of walking and cycling rates um, throughout cities, but also a greater appreciation of space for people and the need for that on, on streets. Uh, we also saw large numbers of people using uh, green and open space and a great appreciation for those spaces as well. Um, and there were responses from communities uh, around the world in cities to support the most vulnerable um, in this time through the, the pandemic as well. And looking to the transition in the medium term, where a number of cities are around the world now, they're looking to come out of a period of lockdown and having to implement uh, strict public health policies to ensure social distancing, to reduce the spread of the virus, but at the same time, it's opening up and increasing the levels of movement. So public transport is having to adapt to ensure uh, safe uh, safety for their passengers. And this is resulting in a reduction in capacity of public transport. So cities are looking to other modes, so walking and cycling and other micro mobility options to support and supplement public transport. Uh, to try and make sure we don't see increases in private transport use, which we have seen in some cities. Uh, we're also seeing cities trying to reduce uh, peaks and crowdings um, in, on, in commercial areas, but also on transport throughout the cities um, and other measures which look to ensure that cities can come out of the lockdown in a safe way with public health at, at the centre of a lot of its policies. Um, looking towards the long term, um, many, including Cities Forum, think that the pandemic can be a catalyst for more long term sustainable change. Um, and the research has shown that this is, uh, this is a key thing that the experts think should happen as well. Um, and the cities have to be adapt and be more flexible in the future to be both sustainable, but also to ensure that they can stop uh, the impacts of any future pandemics as well. So some of the ways they're looking to do that at the moment, cities are looking to at the moment, but also should plan to is through transport. Um, the research has shown that walking and cycling needs to be heavily invested in um, to provide and uh, ensure that they can fill the gap in capacity that public transport can't provide at the moment. Um, this is the same for other micro mobility options like e-mobility. E um, and they all need to be invested in to create a more flexible and adaptive uh, mobility network within cities. Um, at the same time, cities need to invest in more people-friendly streets, so investing in car-free areas and increasing the space and capacity there is for people to walk and cycle. Um, at the same time, uh, green economic stimulus packages can be used to invest more in renewable energy, but also in building retrofitting and efficiency, as well as sustainable transport. Um, Cities need to invest in digital infrastructure. The research has shown that they believe that with more people working from home, um, there needs to be greater investment to improve access and uh, equity to uh, digital infrastructure at the same time as investing in smart technology initiatives so that public health uh, strategies and policies can be integrated fully within government services uh, in the future. Uh, there should be a focus on sustainable development goals to ensure that those at least developed do not fall behind further as a result of the pandemic, but they're supported. Uh, there needs to be research into looking at uh, localised decentralised neighbourhoods as to whether these could be an answer in terms of providing more livable localised neighbourhoods within cities where people can get everything they need to live within a short distance from where their home is to reduce the need to travel and move around. Um, there should be more uh, investment into ensuring accessibility to green open space with throughout cities and that they're integrated within the urban fabric. Um, and lastly, there needs to be investment in 
and research into the positive impacts of uh, more community cohesion and social capital and the the benefits it provides to creating more resilient cities, um, both for sustainability, but also potentially for more uh, future pandemics as well. So in conclusion, this is a great opportunity for cities to rebuild and to bring forward um, policies that they're looking towards the future to ensure that they're more sustainable um, and climate friendly. And in this way, the pandemic has provided both a challenge, but also provides an opportunity for cities to take. Thank you.